platforms that we use to support people. Everything was, everything is going to be in that bill, uh, totally revamped. So I told him this is very far reaching. I said, especially, and you heard me come out early and saying that, uh, I'm concerned about inflation. I'm concerned about COVID. I'm concerned about geopolitical unrest. This is three, four, five months ago. Guess what? Today, inflation is the biggest threat I think we have right now based in, in West Virginia and around the country. I hear from the higher prices, the higher cost. No matter what we have done, we've sent out $5.4 trillion to try to help people, to try to stave off a medical uh, disaster, if you will, because of COVID when it first came. So we, we dodged that. We got a vaccine out earlier than anyone thought could happen. And then on top of that, we, uh, we dodged a financial crisis, but we're getting into it because we're making more of a crisis on the individual person today because of high cost of inflation. Geopolitical, think about that one, huh? Geopolitical right now, we've got more threats, more bolstering from Russia on the Ukraine with 150 plus thousand troops ready to march or call our uh, uh, bluff, if you will, whatever, basically, they want to sign sworn statement that the West will not ever infiltrate or go any further with NATO on the former Russian uh, states, if you will. So that's going to be a big thing. And then you have China just totting Taiwan to no end and seeing what we're going to do. So with all those reasons, I said $29 trillion of debt, and I've said this before. And I remember when I first got to the Senate in 2011, Armed Services Committee, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, all of them are there. The chairman, Mike Mullen, uh, was asked the question, what is the greatest threat the United States of America faces? And he never hesitated. I thought it was going to be some other military might challenging us. He said the debt of the nation will be the greatest threat the United States faces. And with that, that basically just stunned me because I've always said you had to get your financial house in order. Now, with that, I've never, that never left me. That's never left me. And I said, guys, come on. Now we're $29 trillion of debt. When Mike Mullen said that, Hoppy, we were $14 trillion. Ten years ago. Think about it. So this is what's happening. So I said, don't you think we ought to take another approach? I said, we're in the 50-50 Senate. You all are approaching legislation as if you have 55 or 60 senators that are Democrats. And you can do whatever you want. Well, you know what? We're all a little bit diverse. I said, I'm not a Washington Democrat. How many times have I said that? I think I still represent the centrist, moderate wing of a Democratic Party that has compassion, but also has reasonability. So with that... I said, I can't, and let me tell you why. When they first brought the bill out, I said, Chuck Schumer, there's nothing in there about accountability, holding people accountable. There's no work requirement. There's no means testing to where you're targeting the people really need it. To give, put, give you an example, the child tax credit. Do you believe people making two and four hundred thousand dollars would still get the child tax credit the same as someone making fifty, sixty, or seventy that really needs it? They didn't do that. So that the price goes up. We have children now that are living with grandparents, and really with the assistance that we give through the welfare system, don't you think that we could basically target that child, make sure the money follows the child? So if a grandparent's raising the child, they're getting the money, and not the parent who, even though they're biological parents, are not capable or not having the desire to even raise that child. So many things we can fix, Hoppy, that they won't even talk about. So we've been way far apart philosophically. Now the money... Remember I thought it was a six trillion dollar bill and Bernie says we've cut it down to three and a half. And then it went over to the house and they cut it down another two point two. When I've always said I was at one five from the beginning. I gave Schumer exactly the philosophical beliefs and the amount of money that I thought we could raise in it, pay for everything. And so they've had that from day one on July in uh, July twenty twenty of this year. He's had that. Now he never shared it with anybody. Now the same way I never told anybody. I says, my goodness, everyone's known. I've spoken so many times on television and telling people where I am. I have a problem. You know, we don't have enough people participating in our society. In a republic, it's a people own it. In a democracy, it's a representative form of government. We have to participate. And we're not. So we need more participation. So we've gone through all of this. So they've cut the six trillion, three and a half trillion hoppy, down to two point two trillion. And then the president and I were talking about, well, okay, 1.75 was the most. If we did a good tax reform, the only reason I even voted to get on reconciliation was to fix the taxes so that everybody paid their fair share. The ultra-super wealthy, the corporations that weren't paying anything, everybody would pay their fair share. And it would be competitive. It wouldn't be just retribution and be uh, 
uh, you know, basically uh, payback because they got a big tax break okay. in 2017. Okay, okay, so we went through all that. Let me just say. All right. And we, okay, they couldn't get that. Let me tell you one thing, Hoppy. The same bill I have in front of me right now that they kept putting in front of me was the same $6 trillion bill from the beginning. The only thing that changed was the time element which they would pay for things. And I said, that's just in genuine to tell someone who's getting a child tax credit, it goes away in one year. Okay? Or someone who's getting any of these other services goes away in two or three years when we are basically trying to collect taxes for 10 years to pay for them. And that's the truth. All right. So there's a lot to unpack here. Let me yes, start with, with what you said. It sounds like you believe that the administration and or Democratic leaders did not negotiate in good faith with you. Is that fair to say? No, that's not fair to say because they have dealt the best that they can in good faith. I just knew what the intent was from day one. And they've got so much pressure. you got to think, Hoppy, there's only me right now and Kirsten Sinema who's been fighting a fight for some other things she believes in and, and disagrees with. But there's only two out of 50 Democrats. 48 Democrats would have signed on to $3.5 as I understand. So they're trying to keep them on board and placate them. You've got basically 200-plus over Democrats in the Senate, uh, in the House, that would have signed on to whatever they had won. they got to placate them. Every time we sent something back from the House, and I'd work with the White House, they sent it to the House, they changed it, put everything back in. They couldn't get there, Hoppy. They couldn't take away all the social reforms that they've had pent up for years. Okay? I want social reforms to the point that has responsibility and accountability. They want to know. I mean, you've heard them speak heavily against any work requirements. Oh, we can't require people to work. Or any targeted, why are we giving people making two and four hundred thousand? Why are we allowing someone that makes five hundred thousand to get a discount on an EV or electric vehicle? That doesn't make any sense to me at all. Well, it's, it sounds to me like that you believe you're basically in the same place where you've been for months, but that that there were Democrats or people involved in negotiations that were moving goalposts. That's what it sounds like you're saying. I don't, you know, I, I can't. Well, can let me, all right, let me go to if that's not if that's not the case. Let me go to this. I'm, I'm, the only thing I'm saying is this: I'm not blaming anybody. I knew where they were, and I knew what they could and could not do. They just never realized it because they figure, surely to God we can move one person. Surely we can badger and beat one person up. Surely we can get enough protesters to make that person uncomfortable enough. They'll just say, okay, I'll vote for anything. Just quit. Well, guess what? I'm from West Virginia. I'm not from where they're from, and they can just beat the living crap out of people and think they'll be submissive, period. This is what uh, Jen Psaki said yesterday. Senator Manchin promised to continue conversations in the days ahead and to work with us to reach the common ground. If his comments on Fox and written statement indicate an end to that effort, they represent a, quote, sudden and inexplicable reversal in his position and a breach of his commitments to the president and the senator's colleagues in the House and Senate. Your reaction to that? They basically, they retaliated. I figured they would come back strong. The bottom line is, why would I have said earlier when I was asked about the statement, that the president put out, and they said, what, what's about this statement? The president was going to basically delay it because I'd gone and talked to him. He knew we couldn't get there, but, you know, he says, I want to keep trying. I said, sure, go ahead, keep trying. Whatever you got to do, we'll do it. And he made that statement. I said, that was a president's statement. That wasn't my statement. I didn't know. You know, basically, I'm always willing. You know me, always willing to work and listen and try. I just got to the wit's end, and they know the real reason what happened. They won't tell you, and I'm not going to because. Wait, 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 wait. You no. say, wait, wait. You said you, there is. They know the real reason. They're not going to tell us. You're not going to tell us. What do you mean? What's the real? Well, uh, the so bottom line is there was there was there was basically, and it's staff. It's uh, staff driven. I understand staff. This is not the president. It's the staff, and they drove some things and they put some things out that were absolutely in, in, inexcusable. And they know what it is, and that's it. So, so they, so you're saying the president's staff was putting out, I don't know, was generating criticism of you uh, that that finally pushed you to the brink? Is that what you're saying? I'm just saying that, bottom line, I knew that we could not change. It was never going to change. It never could change with that many people. So I think for the last month, I've been telling people, they keep saying, Joe, where are you? What are we going to do? How about this? And all of my colleagues are getting very frustrated. I could understand that. And I said, gentlemen and ladies, it's time to vote. Just vote. I'm not going to tell you where they want to guarantee up front. I said, I can't guarantee anything up front. Just vote and you'll find out where I am. Oh, they don't want to do that. I said, well, you're going to have to. I said, you can't continue like this, but they did. 
I just said vote, and I'm still saying it's hot. And then I think Bernie yesterday on CNN says, I want mansion. We put it on the floor. I said, Bernie, please put it on the floor. Maybe it'll sink in that we have to look at a different direction than this far-reaching social agenda of yours. Speaking of, speaking of different direction, then, are you open to or would you be open to uh, a different direction then? And what is that different direction? Is it breaking out some of these things next year and considering them uh, individually or on a smaller scale? I'll be very few of these things that have ever been worked through a committee. Don't you think maybe a committee could put eyes on it, have hearings where the public can see where the differences may be between Democrats or between Democrats and Republicans? That's what hearings are for. And then make a decision. You know, I begged back, back in with the American Rescue Plan. I begged at that time. I said, told the staff and all those people, I said, can't you at least go through this process of the Senate the way we do it in meetings, and committee, and hearings before you go to reconciliation. I have no time to waste. Got to go, got to go, got to go. And I says, well, you know, I think that basically people are expecting us to be a bipartisan and they're expecting basically civility and how we work together and bringing people together. That's what was said. I said, I think you should go in that direction. They said, no. So I went along with them on that. And I think I made it very clear at that time. I won't continue to go down everything you want to do, major policy changes and reconciliation. It needs to go through a process. Let me, Senator, there are, you know well that West Virginia is an older state, a poorer state. Uh, we have a lot of issues here. And many of the advocates of this bill point out to a lot of the things in uh, Build Back Better that would have benefited West Virginians. The prescription drug prices, affordable daycare, the child tax credit. What do you say to those West Virginians sure. who say, boy, we could have used that. That would be helpful. Well, let's just say this. We have one chance at this, okay? You have a chance to fix the tax code that makes it fair and equitable. If you want to talk about in income inequality, the reason there's income inequality is because the tax code allows it to happen. You got a chance to fix it. That was the only thing that all the Democrats voted against, Hoppy, in 2017. So if we all disagreed with the Republicans' reconciliation on tax cuts, don't you think we could sit down and fix a fair and equitable tax code? Next of all, drugs. My goodness. They talk about drugs. We're getting, we're getting absolutely killed on the highest drug prices in the world. Okay? And I've said this. Let's look what we're doing. Look and see what the VA. The VA gets the best prices. They're able to negotiate better than anybody else. But no, they've negotiated some kind of deal on this. They say, oh, we're going to lower drug prices. They got an Alzheimer's drug that's still protected for 10 years, $56,000. I said, if you're going to negotiate, then negotiate. Don't start One. picking and choosing, playing games. Senator, we got to... So you talk about child tax credits, Hoppy. Child tax credits. Make sure the people that need it get it. That's all. Make sure the people get it, that need it, get it. Make sure that the people that are working, if it's called a tax credit, you've got to have a W-2 to where you show that you've worked. You've got to have file a 1099 to show that you have a tax, either you have tax liabilities or not. And at the end of the year, if they have no tax liabilities and they're going to work, send them the money. Senator, so we, we got to wrap this up, and I appreciate yep. your time. But a final question. Is there still a place for you in the Democratic Party? Well, I think so. I would like to hope that there's still Democrats that feel like I do. I said I'm socially, I'm fiscally responsible and socially compassionate. Now, if there's no Democrats like that, then they have to push me wherever they want me.